Yes, indeed, folks. You're tuning to Blue Please here on WOW Radio, WCRadio.com, with myself, Total Biscuit. Welcome to our new listeners, and we do have them. Loads of listeners today. Oh, yes. The channel is buzzing. I'm checking my stats. It's the highest it's been for weeks. So, yes, those of you who claim that the troll pit and the thread, oh, this will end Total Biscuit's career, you all got trolled. Quite literally, every last one of you got trolled. Why on earth do you think that I would perpetuate such a thread? Because it's great publicity! Total Biscuit takes on 50 guys and stays completely unflappable through the entire thing, while the rest of them start screaming, crying, and bawling for the moderators. Ban the troll! Burn him at the stake! He's a witch. He's a troll. He's a beast. He is on the air with plenty of listeners, so yes. If you don't think that my PR is masterful in that respect, then you are sadly mistaken. Yes, indeed you are. Right. Now, I'd like to introduce to you a brand new drop-in. Now, this drop-in is going to feature, in future shows, it is going to be the generic drop-in that signifies when I think Blizzard is phoning it in. And it goes something along the lines of this. Not one, but two Jormanga worms. Yes, not one, but two Jormanga worms. Now, why would I pick such a thing? Well, it's as simple as this. The whole not one, but two Jormanga worms thing was part of the preview for the Colosseum. Eh? And it was put on the feature list like this was somehow exciting. Really? Not one, but two Jormanga worms. Not one, but two Jormanga worms. Oh my god! Two? That's crazy. That's insane, Blizz. You're really pushing the boat out on that one. I mean, the last thing I saw, last time I saw two Jormanga worms would be, uh, oh yeah. That would be in the trash pulls in Hodia, when they're in fact... Ten Jormanga worms. Or let's have a think. Storm Peaks, the big cave. Twenty Jormanga worms. Are you seriously telling me that you're get, trying to get excited over two Jormanga worms? Really? That's that's great, Blizz. Well done. Here's the problem with Crusaders Colosseum. It is encompassed, yeah? It is represented entirely by that dropping. Not one, but two Jormanga worms. Not one set, but three sets of tier gear. And yes, they all look exactly the same. Uh, not ten, but four sets of tier nine. Yes, one for each archetype as opposed to one for each class. Oh. And somehow this is made okay, because it's not one, but two faction sets. Yes, Alliance and Horde. And of course the Alliance one looks significantly gayer. Uh, dear Lord. I, I'm actually watching a live stream right now, because I'm that hardcore. I'm watching a live stream, I believe it is for the Horde, attempting the Twin Valkyries. Now I've looked at the list of stuff that these guys do, and it's basically the Ikaruga boss, and it sounds kind of cool in that respect. However, I am looking at the arena, I'm looking at the place that they're fighting. Now bear in mind, of course, that we've been to Naxxramas so and we've seen the wonderful architecture within. Yeah? We have. We have been to Ulduar and seen the wonderful architecture within. The marvellous variety of places in there to look at. I, I fought in all of the wonderful places, in Freya's Garden, in Thorim's Arena, in Mimiron's Electricity Thing, in Hodia's Ice Cavern, in the courtyard, out in the battleground, on the edge of a chasm, in the middle of a forge, in the descent of madness. And I'm looking right now, I'm staring at it right now at MMO Champion. It's a circle. It's a freaking circle. That's all it is. 
And even the intro art wasn't all that interesting. It's just an arena. There's nothing else. It's a circular arena. That's where you got to fight everything. That doesn't thrill me at all. Now, the issue that people have been having specifically with the tier sets is... Well, there's two issues. The first one is that you don't get unique tier sets for each class. And that would be... It's not a first. It's, in fact, a second. It is the second time that this has happened. When was the first? I will tell you. It's back in the mists of time. And it's not tier 1, but tier 2.5. Yes, indeed. Tier 2.5. Oh, God. Enigma and Doom Callers, and also whatever the hell the priest one was. Do you remember that? I think it was Oracle, yes. Doom Caller, Enigma, Oracle. Do you remember those? They were like paper mache. The whole lot. Seriously, it's like you had spiky things on your head, and your shoulders were like made of blue tack. You know, remember when you used to play with blue tack or play doh, and you'd sort of shape it into strange, weird, chthonic shapes? I know I did. What, you didn't? None of you? Huh. Interesting. You didn't have a baby Shoggoth to tell you what to do? Wow. <laughs> Guys, you were deprived. Would well, explain why you're so miserable all the time. Now, they looked awful. And it, that was the first time that the sets looked identical. As in, this is the first time that... We're talking about final models here. These models look the same. We're not talking about the silliness of Tier 2 when it didn't have its proper models, or Tier 1 when it didn't have its proper models. We're talking about Tier 2.5, and that was his final model set. We assumed that a lot of it was placeholder. You know, even the warrior stuff and the paladin stuff was shared looked reasonable, but it also looked like you're wearing a blancmange. It was pretty silly. We assumed that it was placeholder. It wasn't. This is the second time that's happened. Now, it wasn't any good in AQ40 either, and it's certainly not good this time. However, I've been looking at the designs. Some of them are pretty good. And now, I never like to be someone that says, Oh, well, this one looks good, this one doesn't. Because, hey, it's a subjective thing. As long as they're well textured, generally speaking, you're talking about something that is entirely subjective, personal preference. But I must say, some of you Alliance guys look absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the male sets, yeah, they look pretty awesome. Yeah, the Shaman and Hunter, Alliance side. The caster sets, yeah, not bad. But again, not a lot of variety there. The warrior sets, wow, you have a glowing head. <laughs> well done. That's awesome. But what I laughed at most was the leather sets. It's like, you look like giant angry badgers. And you're wearing a corset of some description. Look, look at the threading. It's like, oh my... Mr. Darcy, I've come undone! Oh, oh dear lord. you got little pouches on either side. What are you keeping in there? Your feminine hygiene products. Oh, dear lord. I mean, if it wasn't for the cool-ass eagles on there, then I would think you looked absolutely ridiculous. Now you want to look mildly ridiculous. And the horde sets. The horde sets are pretty cool. I'm sorry for the mage set. Oh my god, look at that mage set. How cool is that? So awesome. But I thought I was wearing cloth. That doesn't look like cloth to me. That looks like a wrath headpiece. Or was it a mite? Yes, indeed. It looks like a mite headpiece with a little bit of dreadnought thrown in there for good measure. I'm not wearing plate. Why does it look like plate? But yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the rest of it. It's not too bad. But the question is, is it acceptable to release these sets that are just specific to armor type with just a little bit of recoloring. I mean, it's not entirely fair because they're not all like that. There are some mild variations, but it does seem to me a little bit lazy. Now the question we then therefore have to ask is just how important is this to people? Well to me, I do take a certain amount of pride, as I imagine most people do, in how my character looks. Which is why I hate tier 8.5. Because it makes look, me look like I'm wearing pajamas. I can't be taken seriously if I'm not wearing a long flowing dress. I mean robe. Yes, robe. That's what it is. Manly. Manly mage. 
I can't look that way if I'm wearing what seems to be spandex. It's like a jumpsuit, for God's sake. I don't feel like a good mage in that. I like me robes, I like me big hats. So if I don't get that, I get upset. Now, here's the real issue, and this has been happening since Wrath launched. Homogenization of how people look. Your individual avatar is something that you have spent a long time creating and crafting. You've put a lot of effort into it. It's why you care about your avatar so much. It's why you would, say, get upset if your avatar suddenly disappeared. It's why people get so upset when they get hacked and get their stuff taken away. It's not because they can't get it back. It's because their avatar, they feel violated. Yeah, their avatar has been violated by somebody else. It's theirs. It belongs to them. It's theirs and theirs alone. It's why a lot, most people don't account shared. It's why I've never account shared. It's mine. I'm not trusting anyone else with it. This is my avatar. I was the one who put so much work into this. So why should I give it to anybody else? So when I see avatars that look exactly the same all over the damn place, I have to wonder, where's my individuality gone? Where's my individuality as a unique guy in the world? This is something we've been trying to perpetuate. This is something Blizzard has been trying to perpetuate. And this is where the big piece of cognitive dissonance comes in. Blizzard has been trying to get people into endgame content to make sure that everyone can feel like that big hero. Eh? You can, it's difficult to feel like a big hero when all you're doing is collecting ten bear asses. It's not so difficult to feel like a big hero when you're slaying big dragons, robots, demons, old gods, whatever the hell. But here's the issue. How can you feel like a hero, a unique and wonderful, powerful hero that is looked up to and respected when you actually, in fact, end up looking like a grunt? And I don't mean an orc grunt, I mean a grunt, as in a standard issue set. Same problem that I had with everyone wearing all of the tiered stuff in Naxxramas and now to some lesser degree in Old War. And here, we've got the prime example of where that's really going to go wrong. Everyone is going to look very, very similar indeed. I get to look the same as the priests and the warlocks. They're just reskins. I mean, don't get me wrong. All three of them look cool. And yes, thankfully, the mage set looks the best because it's got the cool orange and shiz. But I don't like looking the same as half, uh, but like every cloth wearer in Ogrimmar. Why would I? And it might seem superficial. You might say, oh, well, Total Biscuit, come on, you're just crying over nothing here. Well, not really. Valuing your own avatar is actually something that Blizzard really, really needs to promote. Why do they need to promote that? Because it's the reason people stick with the game in the first place. Yes, it is actually a little bit of a honeypot. It's a troll pit. What goes into the troll pit never comes out, remember. Wow is a troll pit. When you fall into the troll pit, you run into a situation where you don't want to leave. Why? Because you've invested so much time in it. So a lot of people say that very cynically and say, oh, well, you know, it's addiction, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's not addiction. What it is, is the valuing of something you've spent a lot of time on and you put a lot of effort in and you've actually developed some kind of personal connection with. Yes, of course you can develop a personal connection with something that doesn't really exist. It's called sentimental value. On my shelf right now, I have a copy of Saturn Quake. Now, Saturn Quake is not a very good game, but it has sentimental value to me. Why? Because it's what allowed me to play a wonderful game on the Saturn called Death Tank. And you know what happened? I had the best times with Death Tank. Seven player tank madness with a crate of beer and friends, awesome. So I, in turn, have sentimental attachment to Quake on the Saturn, even though it's a terrible game. Can you have a sentimental value to your avatar? In a sentimental attachment to your avatar? Of course you can! Of course! It goes without saying. So, is it best to think that you are a unique and beautiful snowflake? Now, you'll never be a unique and beautiful snowflake when it comes to an MMO. There's just not that variety. But it comes back to what I was saying about making choices. I said that so in the talent section. It's important to let people make choices so that they are customizing their character. It's one of the big ways to customize your character. So, in the combination, we wrap it all nicely up with this show. See, I had a plan for this. The combination of this new sets of tiers, whereby they're 
armor sets based around the type of armor you're wearing as opposed to the class. And the whole thing about saying, oh, well, we might want to take away a bit of choice in the whole talent stakes is getting me really concerned. Homogenization has gone too far already. The last thing we want to do is allow it to go any further. And yes, they're lovely designs, except for the giant badger one. That is a bit silly. And hey, light your head thing. But seeing everyone in them, it's going to make it look very boring, very fast. My name is Tall Biscuit, and you are listening to Blue Please here on Wow Radio. I'll be right back after this with the illusion of choice. Email it in to the at gmail.com. You got a few minutes to do so. I'll be right back, folks. Enjoy. <laughs> 